The indie author revolution has been around for more than a decade, but we indies continue to push the boundaries of what we're capable of. From getting over initial prejudices to staring down perfectionism and author imposter syndrome, we've become a force to reckon with. Indie authors now wear more hats than ever as we strive to create a career full of meaning, prosperity, and potential. We've juggled the demands and continue to be rebels in the face of adversity. Now, after years of hearing the shouts of hustle and grind, we indies are rebelling again. Gone are the days of publishing a book a month until we drop, and in its place are the seeds of a better way to rapid release. A way that feels incredible as we build a sustainable, lifelong author career that not only increases our visibility and royalties, but it's all done with intention and ease. If you're ready to buck the system and become the visionary authorpreneur I know you're meant to be, you've come to the right place. I'm Carissa Andrews, international best-selling indie author, and this is the Author Revolution Podcast. Well, hello there. Welcome back to the Author Revolution Podcast. I am so glad that you're here today. Whew, I have to tell you, this has been an exciting and interesting week. I just wrapped up the Millionaire Author Challenge, and I haven't felt the kind of vibes coming off of students that I have felt from this particular challenge ever. I mean, it was an epic, amazing, astounding, incredible journey that we all went on, and I am, I am more than thrilled that I was able to be the facilitator for such an event. I mean, it was just an incredible group of people who were coming together to learn how to come into alignment with their true desires of their author incomes and their author destinies. And so, first of all, I want to start this podcast episode just saying thank you to everyone who was able to make it to the challenge. It was absolutely better than I had even anticipated, which is saying something. (sighs) Oh. Now, one of the things that was really interesting, though, is one of my students, ironically, from a different challenge, she had just signed up for the three-day plan your series challenge and was communicating with me about how she is trying to come up with her series and the books that she's already worked on and the things that are kind of getting in her way, tripping her up, you know, limiting beliefs and things like that. And so that's kind of what is inspiring today's podcast episode. She asked the question of like, How do I, as someone who loves to learn more about the indie author industry, how do I learn things, but still implement and put into action and motion the doing part, right? How do I go about creating still while I'm learning or implementing and learning all of the things? Because as we've discussed before, we have a lot of hats, we indie authors, right? We have so many things that we are working on from every point of view from, you know, social media, trying to get all that stuff organized to writing our books, understanding, you know, how to write a storyline, how to do the correct genre, hitting tropes. I mean, holy cow, I could go on, but I'm I'm not going to because guys, you already know, right? You know, there's a lot of things. But learning, it seems, at least in the beginning, like it's a valid thing right? It seems like it's valid. We need to understand more about our career of choice, the things that we're trying to accomplish. And while I absolutely agree, otherwise I wouldn't be putting out courses that are helping you to elevate yourself and do it in a way that's faster. There is a a, such a thing as procrastinate learning. And now what do I mean by that? When you are learning, you, you, okay, so When you're first learning how to do something, absolutely, you need to go into it. You need to dig in a little bit and kind of get a good grasp or understanding of the aspect of the business that you're trying to to learn. Do you need to learn every in and out from every angle, from every single thing all at once? No, you need to learn each piece as you need it. And it unfolds for you. We've talked about manifestation, right? And so that's how it works. If we're trying to manifest an author career, just in general, we are going to have to be divinely guided, so to speak, towards the different aspects or the the lessons that we're going to need to learn as they come up. So if we are trying to understand how to write better, we're going to ask questions that are completely related to writing better. If we are at the editing phase, we're going to be learning more about the editing prospects. You know, what's the difference between line editing, copy editing, developmental editing, all of those things. How do we differentiate? How do we know which editors to use? 
when we're in the publishing phase, we're going to be asking questions of, you know, how do I go about putting it on Amazon? Do I want to just do Amazon or do I want to go wide? All of those questions are going to start coming up. And then obviously marketing, which is our favorite, right? Every one of us here is going, yes, I love learning more about marketing. <laughs> so then those questions are going to come up. And how does TikTok work for books? And how do Facebook ads work better? Or Amazon ads, which one? We have all these things that we're going to be learning as we are progressing through our author career and as we're progressing through our different, you know, different season, I guess I would say, of our author career. Now, how you know you're procrastinating learning, though, is when you've learned kind of the basics, you understand that there is, you know, the four major processes. There's the planning, there's the writing, there's the publishing, and there's the promoting. It's the same no matter how many different times you look at it, no matter how many different things you try to add to it or switch it around or look at it differently. Those are the four phases. Editing for me always gets clumped into writing because to me that's part of the writing process. In order to finish it, in order to complete it, it goes through the editing process. So that's wrapped into the writing part. Once you have that basic understanding and you continue to dig in and you're continuing to try to fix something or it's not working out the way you think it should be working. So you're going to you know, really dig your heels in and you feel like you have to do all the things and you start getting overwhelmed and you start feeling like everything has to happen in super fast motion or you need to two times every single video you're listening to because you're trying to consume as much as possible, as fast as humanly possible, you are probably procrastinating, learning and you're probably doing it from a place of not worthiness. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But here's why we procrastinate learn, right? Typically, it's because we're scared to finish our own work. We're going to keep working at learning because it's number one, it's easier to learn, right? It's easier to learn new things than to implement them and face the judgment of others once it's done. It's easier to keep learning so that we can level ourselves up knowledge wise whether or not we even implement it, right? Because no one can tell how much knowledge we have in our own brains. It's when you start speaking that that comes out. So we can feel safe and secure in ourselves. And I think this is really important for individuals who are more introverted as well. It is easier to learn and consume that information than it is to put your book out there and let others see it. It's almost like all the imposter syndrome stuff starts getting in the way and you start feeling like, oh my gosh, what am I even doing? Sometimes it's also a fear of success. It's that fear of what if it does really good? What if things are going super well and now all of a sudden people think I'm going to have to, you know, go to conferences or, you know, whatever your fears are. I personally don't have very many of those anymore. I've worked through them, but there are fears of success. What if you're successful and now it means more work? Or what if now it means more people are reading it, which means I'm getting more negative reviews or, you know, all the different things. Or on the other spectrum, obviously, what if you're afraid of failure? That means, you know, if you put your book out there and it tanks, what happens? What does that mean for you as an individual? What does that mean as an author? What does that mean for your author career? All of those things kind of start coming up and you're you're no longer safe when you put your book out there. And so if you're an individual who your personality automatically puts you in a a position of feeling unworthy, or you need to work through your worthiness, then it's going to be more difficult to finish those projects. And so it's easier to learn. It's easier to procrastinate through learning. It's easier to then turn around and go, you know, when your friend says, hey, how's that book coming? And you go, oh, it's great. Um, I'm still learning how to X, Y, Z though. So it's not quite ready. It's easier to, to deflect by saying there's still stuff you're learning. So that's why it's not done yet. But like we said before, imposter syndrome is really key too. So if you carry the imposter archetype of perfectionism or the expert or even the natural genius, all three of those really, they're going to crop their heads up at this point. They're going to be like, okay, well, I can't call myself an author if I don't know everything there is from every angle, from every person on the planet. (laughs) You know what I mean? The expert wants to be able to say they are the expert and truth be told, you won't, you are never going to know everything. And so that imposter syndrome will keep you stuck. It'll keep you continuing on this loop of learning because you never feel complete. You never feel like you have done enough. And perfectionism is very similar to the expert in that regard, where it feels like every little, like you have to have every little T crossed and every I dotted and every, every little thing done. It's not as much 
about knowing everything and doing it correctly. It's more about the process of it, the minutia in, in the details of it for perfectionism. And then, of course, natural genius just wants everything to be super easy and come easily to them and then just always like learn new things and be good at it. <laughs> and so if those imposter syndromes come up, they can keep you in this cycle of constantly wanting to learn new things, constantly reading new books or listening to new podcasts. And what happens is that disconnects you from your own internal guidance because you know enough. You don't have to have all the information known to man in order to write a book. If you've watched a movie, <laughs> if you've watched a television show, if you've read books yourself, if you read books to your kids, you understand the basics of storytelling because you have done it over and over and over throughout your life. You understand the basics. There is no reason to go crazy learning when it's already embedded so far into your DNA that you could probably eat, breathe, sleep storytelling. We are storytellers for a reason. And our stories don't have to follow, you know, while there are different archetypes, you know, if you go into like the Joseph Campbell hero's journey and everything like that, there are archetypes for stories. Yes. But it doesn't mean you have to follow a simple template over and over again. It doesn't mean your books have to look like someone else's books. It doesn't mean that every trope that is selling right now has to be in your book. It doesn't mean, you know, you see what I'm saying? You, there are different ways your stories are going to be different because it's art. Our writing is our art outlet. Our writing is our exploration of the things and experiences and people and the places that we don't necessarily get to see or, or interact with in reality. And so we create them in our minds so that we can experience those wonderful journeys in a different way. And so when we put a lot of pressure on our stories to be a certain thing or to be a certain way or our books to sell in a certain way or whatever, we're, we're doing ourselves a disservice because we're not allowing the natural ebb and flow of what we're doing to become a part of the process. Procrastinate learning, in my experience, because I trust me, I've done it, but I've come to learn what it is and how to spot it. It's really judging yourself. It's judging yourself and where you're at in your career or your author journey and feeling deeply unworthy of the success you are desiring. You want success. I know you do. And we've been talking about the millionaire author destiny for so long now that it's become hopefully a part of your wiring because everyone deserves to have that and reach for that wonderful, amazing, mind blowing, better than you could ever even imagine right now destiny. And whether that comes through your author career or it comes through something else, doesn't really matter. The goal really is to dream bigger. The goal really is to allow the good to come in. And now me personally, I believe all of us are worthy. We're worthy because we are. There is no requirement, <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no prerequisites in order to get there. There is nothing that is telling you, you have like, oh, you finally like reached the thing. So yep, now you, you are the best author ever. No, you have a journey and that journey is part of the process and it's, it's part of the joy of being an author. Every book is a journey. Every book is an experience. Every book that you're working on or thinking about working on is a part of you that's exploring your universe, your reality in different ways. And it's part of this wonderful curiosity journey that we can go on as well. Like if we allow our curiosity to follow along with the things that we're really inspired and interested in writing, imagine the kinds of things that are going to come out. You know, if you're writing from a place of curiosity and exploration and joy versus, okay, now I got to write this thing because everybody's reading this thing. And you know, it's the most popular thing right now and I really don't want to write it, but I'm going to do it because everybody's telling me to do this thing. It's a completely different vibe, right? Come on. <laughs> this is why when Jenny was telling me I needed to do a werewolf uh, series, I was like, no, because everyone's doing it and I'm, don't, I'm not feeling the vibe. Just because everyone else is doing it doesn't mean I want to do it. And so I had to find my own path to it. I had to find my own way to it and develop a storyline that I could get behind in order to make it happen. And look what's happened. It's done amazing. So all of these things are kind of my way of saying that we need to come back to this place of knowing without a doubt as we're starting. I don't care if you're a new author, to, new to the process, new to the pro program. 
You are worthy because you are. Your stories are worthy because they are. There is no questioning that. It, there's never been a question of that. Your only job is to trust your process and allow it to unfold. Your only job is to follow your joy in the writing process, in the publishing process, and allow it to unfold as it will. And stop worrying about other people. Stop worrying about the, the naysayers or the people who are judging because they're actually just judging themselves. They're not judging you so much. Everybody's looking outward and projecting their own internal beliefs on everybody else. So whenever someone is saying they don't like you or they don't like your writing or they don't think you should X, Y, Z, whatever, those are their limiting beliefs talking. And as long as we understand that, as long as we understand that their limiting beliefs are only their perceptions of their reality, they have no place for us. They have no impact with us. It doesn't matter, right? So how do you overcome procrastinate learning? How do you, how do you go from a place of overwhelm maybe and, and thinking like you have to do everything and learn everything in order to become the person, the author that you're meant to become? Well, in my experience, the best way to overcome that is to set boundaries and limits. So I was giving the example to this particular student that for me, when I realized I was procrastinating learning and I wasn't necessarily doing the things I wanted to do, and interestingly enough, it had nothing to do with my books. I've always been very good at getting my books done in the time frame that they needed to get done. But I did procrastinate learn a lot with Rapid Release Roadmap and not so much the, the content part of it, but the course creation part of it, like actually putting the material together to get it out there. And I had been sitting on that concept for a very long time. You can ask my friend, Stephen Gordon. He's been on the podcast a couple of times. Uh, we, we've been talking about this concept for years. And I finally bit the bullet. I finally just finished it and did what was needing to come out early last year, 2021. And it's been spectacular. It's been it was the most perfect program I could put together at that time. And things have just continued to evolve. And now I'm working on the next thing, the next aspect of it, the next big thing. And for me, that's going to be the Millionaire Author Manifestation course. It's going to be a huge course. I'm going to be incorporating so many of the same things that I am learning when it comes to manifestation, when it comes to law of attraction, but it's going to be all incorporated into authorship so that it's kind of touching every single aspect of what we do. And now it's like, I want you to think about what are you trying to ignore? What are the things you're procrastinating doing? When do you find yourself most going towards procrastinate learning? Like what aspect of your author business is it that drives you back to a course or that drives you back to nonstop feeling like you're not enough? Because when that happens, I need you to remember Focus inward and remember that whenever that comes up, you are in complete disagreement to what your inner self is saying to you. Your inner self knows you're enough. Your inner self knows you know enough. And so when you're doing that, if you are feeling ever when you're watching a video or you're learning something or you're listening to a podcast and you're starting to feel anxious about it or you feel like you're not enough or you feel like Oh my God, I didn't know I didn't know that. Now I need to know more of that. And oh my gosh, it's going to snowball. And what if, you know, anytime you start feeling like you're doing it from a place of overwhelm or just craziness, that is your inner guidance system telling you that you need to take a break. <laughs> Honestly, you need to back up a bit. Let it be just a little bit of learning. And so what worked for me, as I go back to, this is my long rambling way of going about it, I guess. What worked for me is going back to setting myself boundaries. I wake up in the morning, I set my intention for the day. I make sure that I understand what alignment I want to be in. And I do that by either listening to Abraham Hicks videos on YouTube, or I read uh, a book that is in the vibe that I'm going for. Um, sometimes it's Abraham Hicks books like Law of Attraction or Ask and It's Given. That's what my kick is right now. But other times it's been things like Amanda Francis and her book, Rich as Fuck, or Denise Delfield Thomas and her chillpreneur stuff. Or it's been, honestly, um, learning how to launch books. So I've read Launch and I've read stuff on Profit First. And I've read, so it just depends on the area or the vibe that I'm trying to go for, the thing I'm trying to learn. And so I will set my intention first thing in the morning and do that. And then I also move straight into reading one chapter of my fiction book. 
look, we're authors, guys. And I know a lot of you are out there going, oh my gosh, I have all these things. I'm learning all these things and I never have time to read anymore. And I love to read. Well, then what are you doing? <laughs> Set yourself up for success first thing in the morning. Read uh, a chapter from a nonfiction book, then read a chapter from a fiction book every single morning and start that process, that routine to get you in the habit of doing it every single day and train your vibration, train your vibe and your intention to be the person you really want to be. Stop saying no to zoo trips when you really want to go and you're 5,000 words supposedly behind on your book. Stop putting things off that you, you feel you are drawn to, but your mind, I guess, is telling you otherwise. Because life is meant to be lived and experienced. And sometimes living and experiencing is meaning writing your books. Sometimes it means not doing anything for a day and just going and hanging out at the zoo. Sometimes it means learning a little bit, knowing when to give yourself a limit, like an hour of learning time in the morning, you know, spend an hour or even an hour and a half every single day until you feel like you have absorbed the information that you need to absorb. But when that's done, move on and treat it like going to school. Treat it like it's a school day. And so you get an hour and a half. I mean, I know classes are a little bit less than that. It's like 45 minutes or something. But treat it like you are in class. You're there from, you know, 10 o'clock to 1130. And then after that, you move on to the next thing, whatever it is. Whatever mindset tricks you need to put in place or games you need to play, do them to help yourself feel like you are scratching the itch of learning and growing while also doing the things that you are inspired to do. Does that make sense? <laughs> because you can't manifest and create the awesome, amazing career, career of your dreams, your author career, your millionaire author destiny. It can't come if you don't also apply the inspired action of doing the work. Meaning, you know there's a book that's trying to come out. You know that this book needs to be published. You know this book needs to be marketed in some way, shape, or form in whatever way feels best to you. You know these things. And each step comes to you. You know when it's right because you feel the urge to do them. Okay? And so allow yourself the freedom to understand and to go with the inspired action that comes through you. I hope that's making sense. Because it's, it's truly, you don't have to do everything at once. You don't have to learn everything at once. You don't have to be the expert before you can move on to the thing. Because in order to get good at anything, you need to apply the stuff you're learning and put it into the real life thing. You need to go through the entire cycle <laughs> of writing and publishing and marketing your books so that you understand what it really looks like for you. Because you could read all the books in the world and it's all great in theory, but until you actually do the process, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know how you're going to feel when you're marketing your books. You don't know how you're going to feel when you finally hit publish. You don't know how you're going to feel when that book is finally done and people are reading it and telling you how wonderful it was and how it's changed and inspired their lives. What I'm, I guess I'm saying is when you're learning, allow the learning process to be a joy. And anytime it feels like it's become a requirement or like you are doing it because you are running from something, I want you to stop and actually take a, a big break. I'm not just talking about from your learning, but from your writing as well. Take a little bit of a break, take some time off to reset because you put yourself into overwhelm and you need to start searching for some relief, for some inspired actions to be coming. You need that vibe of relief to feel like you are enough. So that's my two cents. That's what I have learned through my process of becoming my better author self, my better person in reality. So hopefully that was helpful to you and hopefully it's inspired you as well. <laughs> I hope you go on and have a wonderful rest of your week. We have a lot of great podcast episode interviews that are going to be coming up very soon. So stay tuned. I cannot wait to share some of them with you. I mean, they're going to be incredible. We have Joe Buer from Alchemy for Authors coming on the podcast. Oh my gosh, guys, it's going to be great. Emma Desi is coming on and uh, some special guests that I can't wait to share with you next week. So I'm not even going to tell you about them right now because I'm so excited and I don't want to ruin the surprise. 
All right. Now, if you're looking for the transcript to today's podcast episode, make sure you head over to authorrevolution.org forward slash 130, and you can find it and download it there. As always, I hope you have a wonderful week. Get in as many inspired words and actions in for your author career this week, and go forth and start your author revolution.